Now that we have some content appearing on the screen, I want to take a little bit of time to talk to you about the React and Redux side of this application, or the side of the application that's really already kind of been wired together for us. Now I've said like three or four times already that if you don't know React or Redux, that's totally fine. And again, for the fifth time, if you don't know React or Redux, that's totally fine for the purposes of this course. In this section, we're going to walk through the React and Redux side of the application. So this is totally optional. You don't have to stick around if you don't want to hear about the React side. So feel free to skip through the rest of this video. So if you're still around right now, I'm going to assume that you want to hear a little bit more about the React and Redux side. So let's start talking about some of the different components and some of the different aspects of Redux that are in use inside this application. We'll first start off by talking a little bit about this initial screen that is displayed to the user. Inside the screen, there are two separate components being made use of. The first is the video select screen component. So this is a component that I made that is customized for this particular application. The video select screen's job is mostly to just receive any drag and drop files that are added to that input from the user. The actual drag and drop functionality inside this application is Im implemented by a third party component called React Drop Zone. React Drop Zone is a component that you can use on your own personal projects. It's really easy to get started with and is what, it is what actually handles the drag and drop functionality inside this app. Let's open up the video select screen component and get a better idea of what's going on inside of there. So inside of my code editor, I'm going to find the SRC directory. Inside of there, I'll find the screens directory, and then I'll open up video select screen. Inside of video select screen, I'm going to scroll down to the render method. So down inside of here, you'll find the component called drop zone. So again, this is a third party open source component that you're free to make use of on your own projects. The drop zone component makes use of a couple of different props. And let's talk about each one in here because they are somewhat relevant. The first is a event callback handler called onDrop. onDrop is a function that is defined inside of this component. Its purpose is to receive any files that have been dragged onto this kind of drop zone area by the user. The onDrop callback is called with a list of the different files that the user has dropped on there. You'll see that we map over the list of files that are provided by the user, and we pull off the name of the file, the path to the file, the size of it, and the type. The type of the file right here is a reference to the actual video file type, so the actual file extension, like AVI or MP4 or MPEG or whatever it might be. After the user drags and drops some videos onto this component, we then forcibly redirect them over to this other route or this other screen that is hosted by the application. So this is use of React Router in process, or this is an actual use of React Router right here. And it's how we get the two separate screens to appear to the user. Once the user drags the video files on, we then send them over to the convert route, which shows the actual conversion UI on the screen, which is something that we'll look at in just a second as well. Now back to the drop zone component. Again, I want to talk about a couple of the other props on here. You'll see a prop on here called multiple. That means that the drop zone component is allowed to select multiple or receive multiple file inputs at a single time from the user. So if we want to convert like say five different videos at once, this component will allow that. The accept prop right here describes the type of files that the user is allowed to select. So if we go back over to my application that's running right now, and we click on this thing to get the file picker to appear, you'll notice that I've got some like PNG files right here and some zip files, but they're grayed out and I can't select them. I can only select a video file, which is right up here. So the AAA, this is a video file. So that accepts prompt right here specifies I only want to accept video files into this input, or I only want to accept video files into this drop zone component. So it's what allows us to make sure that the user is only passing us valid files that we can actually work with. Now class name, if you're familiar with React, yep, just a normal class name. After that are two much more interesting class names. We have active class name and reject class name. These two class names right here are used whenever a user starts to hover over the drop zone component with a valid or invalid file type. And so we can get a better idea of how this looks in process. 
So I'll pull up the UI right here. I'll pull up a video file. So here's my video file right here. So AAA, that's a video file. It is a valid input. So when I drag and hover over, the class name or the active class name gets applied, which turns the entire component green. However, if I start to hover over with some PDF file, which is not valid, then the reject class name is applied instead, which I use to style the entire drop zone as red to inform the user, hey, I don't know, really know how to deal with that thing. Okay, so that's the video select screen. Again, pretty straightforward use of the drop zone component. And this, again, is a component that you can certainly make use of on your own projects. Again, I wanna stress that the entire file upload or the file selection process here is being handled by the React or kind of web side of our application. Just because we are working with a hard drive to select some files here doesn't mean that we necessarily have to involve Electron in the process. We can use the web side of our application to handle file selection or file uploads just as we're used to for developing web applications. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is a little bit more on the Redux side of our application. So once a user selects some video files to convert, what happens from there? Okay, so when a user drops some video onto the screen or clicks on the thing to actually select a video, remember the two effectively are identical, whether or not I click on the thing to get this drop uh, pop open or whether or not I drag a file onto the screen, the two actions are really identical. In either case, a user essentially selects some video. When that occurs, we call an add videos action creator. And yeah, this is where we're starting to get, into, to get into the Redux side of things. So we call that add videos action creator, and then we manually navigate to that other convert screen. And we looked at that code just a second ago. So inside of on drop, here's that navigation line. And here's the action creator called add videos. And we pass in the list of videos to the action creator directly. After that, the videos reducer, so we have a reducer called videos, is responsible for recording the list of videos that are currently pending transcoding or pending conversion. So let's open up the reducer of videos and see what's going on inside of there. So inside my reducers directory, I'll find the videos reducer. And inside of here, you'll find a couple of different actions that are already wired up inside the reducer. So stuff like handling video conversion progress, adding multiple videos or adding a single video, removing a single video or removing all videos entirely from the pending conversion process. So the reducer that we have here is mostly already set up for us. Really, on the Redux side of things, and where we are going to spend the vast majority of time inside this application, is the action creators file. So inside of the actions index.js file, you'll find a couple of action creators in here that have kind of been set up, but not actually implemented yet. So this is where the vast majority of the work that we're going to be doing is going to be located. And that really brings us to our true talking point here, the thing that I really care about inside this application, and that is how do we work with Redux and Electron in the same application. My recommendation to you, if you're making use of Redux inside of your act, inside of your, uh, if you're using Redux with Electron, sorry, if you're using Redux with Electron, all of your code that is meant to communicate between Redux and between Electron should really be located inside of your action creators. That will allow you to centralize all, all your Electron related logic into a single location which is also the, probably the best place for kicking off changes inside of your application anyways. So remember, whenever we are receiving actions or receiving events from Electron, we want that to kind of affect the state of our application in some fashion. Likewise, on the Redux side of things, we always kick off changes to the state of our application from our action creators. And so when we think about Electron and receiving changes, and we think about Redux and how to make changes occur to our application. In both cases, we want to be thinking about action creators. So, so throughout the rest of this section, we're going to be working throughout all these different action creators to implement a couple of them to either listen to events coming from the Electron side of our application or to issue events to the Electron side of the application. Okay, so that's a little overview on the React and Redux side of the app. 
Again, if you watch through this, if you went through this, even without knowledge of Redux, hopefully you kind of get a good idea that, yeah, we're going to be mostly working inside of this actions index.js file. And if you are familiar with Redux and with React, hopefully you got a better idea of how to combine Redux with Electron in your own personal applications as well. So with this little aside all complete, let's get back to working on our application in the next section.